Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products off the website, or you can sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team right off our website as well. For a one-time $25 fee, you can be in business for yourself and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can be a health educator. Because that's what this is really all about, educating folks about health. Nutritional supplement educator. It's about educating people about the power of nutritional supplements. And helping people change their lives at the most fundamental level, the level of good health and wellness. Eight, uh, call 866-735-2470 for more info. 866-735-2470 for more info. Or sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. Don't forget to check out our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. We have been talking about one of my all-time favorite things to talk about in the world of nutrition, and that is the polysaccharides, the most abundant organic molecules on the planet. Specifically, we've been talking about ocean polysaccharides, these two entities, the ocean and polysaccharides. That just means many sugars, poly, many saccharide sugars. Polysaccharides are long chains of sugar. And what's really interesting about these polysaccharides is they have little tiny squares. They're made up of little tiny openings, kind of using being metaphorical here. They're not really squares, but from a, from a molecular standpoint, they are kind of square-like shaped. They're crystalline. That's what a crystal is. A crystal is a is a, a, a entity, a thing that's got a bunch of uniform shape, uh, uniform uh, holes in it, uniform openings. And these uniform holes, uniform openings, molecularly speaking, uh, speaking at the tiniest of levels, there's these little openings, and they're regularly shaped, and they hold pieces of electricity. And that's exactly what polysaccharides do. They hold pieces of electricity. They're crystalline, except they're liquid crystalline, which is really amazing. And these liquid crystals that hold energy sit on top of the ocean, which is sucking up energy from the sun. And between the ocean and the polysaccharides, you've got this incredible, powerful battery system between the ocean and the sun. These, the, the polysaccharides sit right between the ocean and the sun. The ocean uh, it contributes water. Polysaccharides are the quintessential water-loving substance. The ocean dedicates or, or delivers water. And the polysaccharides contribute electrical energy to the ocean. So it's got this symbiotic relationship. The ocean contributes water to the polysaccharides. The polysaccharides contribute electrical energy to the ocean. Back and forth they go. And you've got this incredible electrical system at the le top of the ocean. And in this electrical system really fuels the life force in many ways. It may be the fundamental place where life begins on the planet is at this interface. 
It's a very powerful interface. It's not just theoretical either. It's nutritional. We can use this powerful interface nutritionally. The polysaccharides have an ability to turn the sun into solid matter. And it all depends on the, uh, on the water that's contributed by the ocean. This process of turning the sun into solid matter is called the photoelectric effect. Scientists call it transduction. Transducing is when you take energy from one form and put it into another form. So energy from the sun turns into energy, well, electrical energy. That's called transduction. And seaweed, which lives right on the ocean surface, can act as the ideal transducing element for the sun to transduce the sun's energy into solid energy, into material energy. That makes them incredibly powerful things. These humble little seaweed are probably, arguably, the most powerful substance on Earth. Seaweed may, being made up of algae. There's three different kinds of algae. You've got red algae, you've got blue algae, you've got green algae. They divide them up by colors based on the kind of pigments that they have in them. And algae are just like, it should come as no surprise, as important as algae are and as important as seaweeds are and these things on the top of the ocean, it could, should come as no surprise that these things are powerfully, nutritionally valuable. There's a reason why whales grow so big and they eat algae. That's what they live on, and um, not just algae, but other these, these microorganisms that sit on top, of the, on top of the ocean. How incredible is it that the biggest creature on the planet exists by eating the smallest creature on the planet? That's pretty amazing right there. Algaes are super fatty. That's a, this is their claim to fame, is their, in the world of nutrition anyway. Their claim to fame is they're super fatty. They're a wonderful source of fatty nutrients, which makes perfect sense, obviously, because if, they're fa if algaes weren't fatty, they wouldn't exist. Isn't that interesting? You wouldn't think that algaes are fatty, but without, if they weren't really fatty, if algaes weren't really fatty, they would dissolve right back into the ocean. They have to have a fatty nature in order to separate themselves out of the watery ocean. And this, this fatty nature that algaes have, even though they're also obviously saturated with water, this fatty nature that they have is incredibly nutritionally valuable. Fats hold on to electrical energy. It's not the water that holds on to the electrical energy, it's the fats that hold on to the electrical energy or trap the electrical energy in the algae. The water is where the energy is conducted, but the trapping is done in the fats. And this fact that these, that these uh, fats have a trapping power really makes them nutritionally valuable for protecting our skin. When we eat algae, we get skin protection. We get eye protection. Because the fatty molecules that are holding on to energy or, that, or have the ability to hold on to energy will hold on to energy and keep it from burning us. It's kind of uh, uh, sequestering the energy, particularly solar energy. That's why you want to eat your, your uh, pigments. This is what eating pigments is about, and algaes are great sources of pigments. The reds, the blues, and the greens are pigments. That's what makes them red and blue and green, pigments. We call them flavonoids and carotenes. And they're found in all kinds of eye vitamins. Eat your algae to protect your eyes. Eat your algae to protect your skin. Eat your algae to protect the inside of your body as well. Because algae, the electrical energy inside of your body can cause sparks and can, can, can create damage. So eating algae can protect the inside of your body. Algae are also a great source of, not surprisingly, the most powerful of the fats, the nutritional fats that is, and that's the essential fatty acids, particularly the hard to find omega-3s which, not surprisingly, again, are important for eye health and for brain health, two very electrical systems, the eyes and the brain, also for skin, the anti-inflammatories in the skin. People with eczema know, or should know, that fish oil is one of the best things you could do for your eczema or for any skin issues. The relationship between EFAs and skin is like no other in all of nutrition. There's no, well, I don't want to say there's no, but there's a powerful connection between the essential fatty acids and the skin. That's really where EFAs can manifest their most dramatic effects, especially omega-3s, because they're so, so, so anti-inflammatory and so wonderful for uh, helping heal and protect against all kinds of inflammatory issues. Of course, most or all skin issues are inflammatory issues. On our last program, we talked about one of the most well-researched of the algae components. It's not a fat. It's a polysaccharide called fucoidin. Fucoidin is found in brown algae. Fucoidin is ridiculously powerful, unbelievably important. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. Got lines open, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll, we will return right after this. Okay, we're back. 
back. On the bright side, pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or business or health challenges, or if you just have a comment or success story you would like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, go to brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com and you can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 866-735-2470 All right, so we're talking about algaes and seaweed, the humblest arguably the humblest living forms on earth made up of algae, which are the humblest living forms on earth along with the bacteria. Algaes are living creatures, they're part a plant part bacteria, a strange little life form they are, but very, very important for health and wellness. They transduce the sun's energy. They're loaded with fats. They're loaded with great sugars, one of the best sugars, one of the all-time great sugars. Uh, in, at least one of the most well-researched sugars is something called fucoidin, which is found in brown algae. Brown algae has names like kelp and rack, W-R-A-C-K, rack, like bladder rack. And brown algae, or fucoidin, I should say, has uh, a couple of really in, uh, very important properties. The polysaccharide, it's, fucoidin is a polysaccharide made up of fucose, the, uh, the sugar fucose, which is one of the, those essential sugars that we've been talking about. The essential sugars, I know I say a lot, but I say it again, the essential sugars are not really essential, but they're great to have, and you definitely need them. Your body can make the so-called essential sugars, but they're very, very important. And fucose is one of the more, more important ones, one of the important ones. And uh, it goes to make up fucoidin. Fucoidin has a couple of, has two really interesting nutritional properties that make it very, very valuable. For one, it has immune system stimulating properties. The, the fucose and the fucoidin uh, active, turn on immune cells, activate immune cells. And that means they're, uh, they have wonderful immune-boosting properties, especially if you're dealing with cancer. There's all kinds of wonderful literature about fucoidin and cancer. Fucoidin and uh, the, uh, the uh, polysaccharides, not just fucoidin, but fucoidin especially, upregulates collagen production. It has healing properties, anti-aging properties, especially useful for skin wrinkles. All these polysaccharides, by the way, are being explored for their use uh, in, uh, in skincare products, wonderful moisturizing properties. We talked about the prote sun protection properties that they have. They have anti-aging properties. They upregulate collagen production. And then a second interesting property that these uh, sugars have, or a third, I guess, a third interesting property, is they have these negative charges on them. And blood cells, red blood cells, also have negative charges on them. When we get sick, or when we have leaky gut syndrome, these uh, microbes, bacteria, peptides from foods, if you have leaky gut syndrome, all of these things tend to have positive charges. Immune complexes tend to have positive charges. And uh, uh, compounds that are found in plants, we call them lectins. Those also tend to have positive charges. And these can disrupt the negative charges on the red blood cells. When that happens, red blood cells clump up. This is a very common reaction. This is one of the most common reactions. I call that sticky blood. And this is one of the most common reactions uh, to, to, uh, that there is to blood toxicity. Things getting into the blood that shouldn't get into the blood disrupt the electronics. Remember, the blood's elect electrical. As the blood is circulating, it's generating an electrical charge. It needs to circulate. It needs to move. When there is toxins into the blood, whether you're getting the toxins in through uh, uh, leaky gut syndrome, or you get the toxins in through drugs, or toxins in from lectins, wherever you get these toxins into the blood, it causes a disruption in the red blood cells, electrical charges, and things clump up. That's called sticky blood. That's called dirty blood. That's what I mean when I talk about dirty blood all the time. It's not just metaphorical. It's literally what's happening. You get this clumping up in the blood, and that messes everything up. All disease is cell disease. Yes, we say that all the time. But all cell disease is preceded by dirty blood, sticky blood, clumped up blood. Well, guess what? If you could introduce negative charges into the blood... You can reestablish that balance. Oh, where can we do that from? What has negative charges? Hmm, fucoidin. <laughs> the polysaccharides have negative charges. That's what makes fucoidin such a great blood thinner and great blood tonic. In fact, that to me is fucoidin's claim to fame. That to me is, is really why we want to be using this. There's lots of reasons, but that's one of the main reasons why we want to be using this stuff not only when we are sick, 
not only, God forbid, if we have cancer, but just as a general blood tonic. It keeps things moving. Remember we said these, these fucoidins and these polysaccharides, they're slimy. And that slime gives them sort of a, a lubricity. It helps lubricate things. And that happens because of those negative charges. So the negative charges that you introduce in the blood through fucoidin helps in the blood. It, it, it get, makes your blood, first of all, it makes your blood circulate better, so you get more electrical energy. The, as the blood's circulating, it's generating an electri electrical charge. That's a, that's a fundamental rule of bioelectronics, of the electronics of the bio biological system, or really of all electronics. When fluid moves, if it has particles in it, it will generate an electrical charge. That's called hydrodynamics, or fluid dynamics. And the same thing happens in the blood. The fluid dynamics of the blood generate an electrical charge, a zeta potential, if you're a scientist. And when you use fucoidin, you're facilitating the movement. You're facilitating the movement of, of the blood cells and all, everything else in the blood. That means you're upregulating, you're amping up the electricity in the body. You think this stuff's good stuff, important stuff? Heck yes, it is. And it's the humblest stuff on earth. How do you like that? That, by the way, that red blood cell, uh, that, that phenomena where red blood cells clump up when there are toxins or lectins or, or undigested food particles or immune complexes present, that clumping up is called agglutination. And scientists will actually check for how problematic a substance is, how, uh, how strong a lectin is, for example, by how, how fast it agglutins blood, how fast it clumps up blood. Agglutination just means clumping up. Agglutinated blood is dirty blood, sticky blood. All disease is cell disease, and all cell disease is preceded by agglutined, agglutinated, sticky, clumped up blood. On the other hand, polysaccharides like fucoidin, negatively charged, they can act to separate out those positive charges. In essence, cleaning out the blood. They introduce negative charges so that the red blood cells can have their electrical charge reestablished and they can repel each other. What's happening is all the red blood cells have negative charges and light charges repel each other and that re repelling is what causes a separation and allows things to move. When they don't repel, they stick. When there's a positive charge in there, it's like a positive and a negative stick. And this makes the polysaccharides incredibly, incredibly important for blood thinning. From the journal Thrombosis Research, October 1991, a study that was done on blood thinning properties of fucoidin, researchers found not only that fucoidin was an effective blood thinner, but they actually called it a cheap and easy source of a new type of anticoagulant. They actually want to use the stuff as drugs. But you don't need to use them as drugs. You can just make sure you're using your fucoid Z and your Z radical. I like the fucoid Z better, but you can do both. By the way, there's another substance that's in the longevity formulary that helps thin the blood that we don't talk about a lot, and that is something called proteolytic enzymes. Enzymes, protein enzymes. Protein enzymes like papain and bromelain. These are really interesting. This is just a little digression here, but uh, enzymes can also thin the blood. That means you can use your ultimate enzymes as a blood thinner. That means you, now, it's not going to be like a drug blood thinner. It's not going to be like Coumadin or Warfarin, but it's going to have blood thinning properties. And this is one of the reasons why I tell people to use their, um, use their ultimate enzymes if you have pain. If pain can be caused by a clumping up or a clotting up inflammatory factors in joints, for example. So the ultimate enzymes actually can help break up proteolytic enzymes that can cause inflammation, inflammatory pain. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Back on the bright side, got lines open, 844-236-6010. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also purchase Longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com, and you can sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team. Off the websites, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and brightsideben.com, or call 866-735-2470 for more information. All right, we'll get your calls in just a moment. A couple stories here from uh, the journal Neurology. Frequent sauna bathing reduces risks of stroke. Frequent sauna bathing is associated with a reduced risk of stroke, according to a new international study in a 15-year follow-up study, people taking saunas four to seven times a week were 61% less likely to suffer from a stroke than those taking a sauna once a week 
This is the first study done on the topic and the findings were reported in neurology. Stroke is obviously a serious problem and this study, to me, highlights the idea that there's these little things that we can all do without the doctor, without medicine, without drugs, without surgeries, without all the ways we medicalize our health to keep our, to, to improve our longevity and reduce our risks of disease and maintain our health. Health does not have to be medical. We've just been, we've been, been bamboozled into thinking that we got to be medicalized and that if you have diabetes, you got to take a drug. I, have you noticed how many anti-diabetes drugs there are out now? I love the one where the guy is dancing all the time. He takes his, he takes his anti-diabetic medicine and he can't stop dancing. He's dancing at the desk when he's doing his work. He's dancing when he's cooking. He's dancing everywhere he goes because he ta has his anti-diabetic medication. I forgot the name of the medication. It's this idiocy, this lunacy. The, uh, this infantilization. You ever notice how healthy everybody is who takes their drugs? They're swimming and they're climbing and they're jumping out of airplanes after they take their cholesterol medicine or their, their uh, uh, psoriatic arthritis medicine. Now, this, this one for psoriatic arthritis really gets me. Psoriatic, psoriatic arthritis is a sign of a body that is badly disturbed. Psoriatic arthritis is a combination of psoriasis and arthritis. Psoriatic, as if one wasn't bad enough. Now you got two, psoriasis and arthritis together. Why do you have them together? Because it's the same cause and it has nothing to do with the drugs. It's, they show these people taking their immune suppressing drugs because uh, you, nothing says intelligent medical strategy more than shutting down your immune system. And uh, they take their immune suppressing drugs and now all of a sudden they're swimming again and they're doing their yoga again and they're doing all their athletic stuff again. Listen, if you got psoriatic arthritis, you may hide the symptoms with an immune suppressing drug because you don't have to see the symptoms, but you are not going to be healthy, period. And any, they don't tell you you're going to be healthy. They just imply it with the pictures. And any implication even that you are going to be healthier when you take a drug is a lie, and it's so mean-spirited and it's so anti-humanity. Even the actors should be ashamed of themselves. Even the actors who are participating in those commercials are a disgrace, embarrassing themselves, embarrassing, uh, uh, slapping every human being in the face to imply that you could be a better swimmer when you take your anti, uh, you take your, uh, your immune suppressant biologic. All right, that's me on my high horse. I apologize, but it just makes me mad. All right, one more and we'll get your calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. Vitamin D improves weight gain and brain development in malnourished children. High-dose vitamin D supplements were shown to improve weight gain and development of language and motor skills in malnourished children, according to a study led by the University of Punjab, Pakistan, and Queen Mary University in London. Vitamin D, which is called the sunshine vitamin because we get it from the sun, is a building vitamin. It's one of nature's best life management, stress management, happy molecules, vitamin D, that you get from the sun. And oh yeah, vitamin D, it's cholesterol. It's a form of cholesterol. It's a derivative of cholesterol. They say it comes from cholesterol, but if you look at the chemical structure, it's just a tweaked version of cholesterol. Just like cholesterol is a life management substance, just like cholesterol is a salubrious substance, that is a health-giving substance, so is vitamin D. Where do you get it from? The sun, once again demonstrating how planet Earth, God, the divine force, nature, whatever you want to call it, has given us everything we need to be strong and healthy and abundant. And we have mucked up the works. And then we go to the doctor to fix us. And how well is that working out for us? All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Liz, uh, Liz in Ohio. Good morning, Liz. Welcome to the Bright Side. And um, I just wanted to ask your opinion on a couple different things in there, if they have any negative, you know, long-term side effects. Sure. Uh, the first one being, like, donating plasma and then also skin removal after weight loss. Uh, donating plasma is not a bad idea. Um, it's also a nice thing to do. And then what, do you, what was the second thing you said? Uh, having like skin removal surgery after. Oh, okay. I see what loss. you're saying. Nah, that uh, after weight, like stretch marks and that kind of stuff, loose connective tissue. There's a term for that. Yeah. Um, and sometimes yeah. women after they have a baby, that'll happen. Yeah. No, there's, I mean, any surgery you run the risk of, uh, you run the risk of adhesions and fibroids. So you want to be a little bit careful. And the key to having an effective surgery, if you have to have surgery, you're going to do surgery, even elective surgery, plastic surgery, uh, paniculectomy, that's what they call that surgery where you have women will have loose skin in the belly and they'll have that cut off. Uh, anytime you have surgery, the key to having an effective surgery is in how well you heal. 
And that's why pre-surgery and post-surgery is so, uh, paying attention to your nutrition, pre-surgery and uh, pre-surgery and post-surgery is so important. You can do, and this is true for any surgical procedure, weeks, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, before you have your surgical procedure, make sure you're loading up on connective tissue building supplements. And by the way, I've got a connective tissue building supplement that should be out here in about hopefully in three or four weeks, uh, that you can use pre-surgery and post-surgery for this reason. Building connective tissue is the very essence of health and skin uh, health and anti-aging, but it's especially important pre- and post-surgery. So loading up with things like vitamin C and uh, collagen, collagen peptides, bone broth, bone broth protein, um, a polysaccharides that we've been talking about, zinc, calcium, getting on the healthy star pack, digestive enzymes, vitamin K, all of these can give you a better pre and post surgery and reduce your, the likelihood of complications. And fibroids can be, uh, I'm sorry, cysts, um, adhesions can be thought of as a uh, type of complication. And it's pretty likely some 90% of surgical procedures result in adhesions. So uh, you really want to be making sure that you're taking care of yourself pre and post surgery so you prevent those kinds of complications. But other than that, it's not, that's a minor, that, that, there's worse things that can, you, you can do to yourself. I wouldn't worry about that. Just make sure you're taking care of okay, yourself great. pre and post. Okay? Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, good deal. Thanks for your call, Liz. Appreciate it. And let's move on to our friend Shauna in Idaho. Hey, Shauna. Hey, good morning, Ben. What's going on? I just um, was introduced to a vibration machine. Vibration machine. Weight. Have you ever heard of those? They Sounds kind of kinky. For, yeah. Oh, that's something did. different. No, okay, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, go uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm I'm teasing. Uh, so what's so what's the deal? What's I I've heard of the vibration machines. I remember they had when I was a kid. I used to go to the gym uh, back in the, the old days in the '60s. I went to this. I I didn't go to the gym, but I used to uh, visit the gym at the local pools that we, we went to. I had a gym, and they had a vibration machine in there. It looked kind of silly. I always thought. But uh, what's the idea? Around. I mean, that was an old belt. But this one, they said it was um, the whole body, and he used it for the Russians in, in space. That he was able to stay up there for 420 yeah. days. Guess what you're doing? That it's, it has some. There's some logic there. There's definitely some logic there. A couple. There's a couple benefits. But we've been. You know how we we've been talking about electrical energy and electricity. Guess what you're doing when you shake the body up like that? Well, hang on, Sean. I got to take a break, and then I'll answer your question when we come back. I'm Farm okay. Spen. You're listening to the Bright Side. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We'll be back after this. On the bright side, got lines open at 844-236-6010. We're talking to Shauna. Shauna, Shauna. Hey, Shauna. Vibration machine? Hey. What did you hear about a vibration machine, by the way? So it's called a whole body vibration. Just to get that straight, that shows my innocence. I can get your joke for a while. But oh, yeah. anyway, um, it just said that it, it rapidly makes the contract and, and um, the muscles contract. And so then it... It is it a belt? It's not muscle. a belt, you said? It's not one of those belt ones? It's the one where you just stand no, up? No, it's it... not a belt one. You stand on it. Yeah. It was in 1995, a Russian, comma, uh, he was a medical doctor, and he also went up and set the record for being there 438, 438 days. Yeah. Because there's no resistance in, in space. There's no resistance in space. There's no, you're not pushing against right. anything in space, so your body dissolves, basically. You know, it doesn't right. literally. And he said the Americans were only making it 120 days. Yeah. They, they have uh, problems with, with their bones and their muscles when they come out of yeah. back from space because there's no resistance. You're not pushing against anything. Resistance makes you so stronger. What it does is it makes rapid and intense muscle fiber yeah. contractions. Five that makes to sense. Three times per second. That makes sense. It also to, it also uh, it also helps you circulate your lymph. Probably uh, helps move sh shakes. It's not a bad idea to shake things up. What you're doing is you're generating an electrical charge. You're upregulating uh -huh. electrical energy in your body. Is what you're doing with that vibration machine. Remember we talked. I, I was I kind of I didn't really elaborate on this idea of transduction. I talked about it for a second briefly uh, at the beginning of the program. How transduction is when you change one type of energy into another. So what you're doing with um, with I was saying how algae turn the sun into into material energy, photonic energy into electron energy. Well, the same thing happens with a vibration machine. What you're doing is you're turning mechanical energy into electrical energy, vibration energy into electrical energy, and indeed that's that's an awesome thing to do, and that's you know scientifically valid. That's great. I mean, you don't want to use it instead of 
instead of exercising, it's yeah, not going to get he you. He still says, you know, use your cardio. Get yeah, exactly. Your cardio going. Yeah, but as an add-in, it's not a bad idea to do it. I mean, that actually has okay. some scientific validity. Are you going to get one? Or were you thinking of it? Oh, I was thinking of it, but I just have this belly fat. I mean, I have 12 kids. Hey, you're not going to shake that stuff kids. away, Shauna. That ain't shaking and away. He did <laughs> say he, it goes into the belly core, but yeah. I don't know how to get rid of no, that now, belly that, fat. See, that's too. where science enters, you know, starts to become a little bit kind of, right, you know, right. what's and true scientifically was, becomes kind of silly. No, you're not going right. to get rid of your belly fat. I can tell you that by shaking it off. I know. That okay. was my second question is how do I get rid of the belly fat? Because well, a couple I want of things. to get my bones and my mat muscles but it's the food right yeah it's always going to be the food but you're also how you're handling the food fastest way to do it is to go low carb or ketogenic go ketogenic it's the fastest way to lose it however what's going to happen is you're going to you're not going to lose the belly belly fat's going to be the last to go so you're going to lose the fat in the rest of your body before you lose it in the belly belly is a major okay. storage area so it's you're going to have to really go do a lot of you it's you have to spend a lot of time eating correctly to lose the belly fat but if you do, if you uh, do everything correctly, that is nutrition, and that is exercise, and that is changing the way you eat, uh, you could do a lot to get rid of body fat uh, any, everywhere in the body. But it's a it's kind of a, a well you have to have a well rounded strategy that involves a whole bunch of. Stuff. I'm going to let you go, Sean. I got somebody screaming there in the background. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, my. That's your kids there. That's okay. Did that help you, Shauna? Shauna? Yes, thank okay. you. Okay, take care. Okay, I don't know what Shauna had going on in there. Dorium, my friend, what's going on, buddy? Hi, what's up? I what's up? am calling because I have a testimony about, yeah. well, in, in recent time, I can tell you my, my well, you, I don't know if you recall, but I am mm -hmm. type 1 diabetic. Okay. And in recent time, uh, I've been waking up and my fastings have been doing really great. They're always in the low 80s. Your blood uh, sugar. For my fasting. Mm -hmm. Your fasting blood sugar. Okay, gotcha. Yes. What do you attribute and, it to? Uh, well, I've been supplementing with the longevity product, and um, I've been noticing my blood sugars are staying a little better and more normal, that is, in the more normal range. How long have you been doing and it? I've been supplementing, I would say, it's been a little while now. And I initially, when I, I was taking mega doses of everything, and then that wasn't going the greatest, I tried to supplement heavily initially, um, taking lots of everything. What, what do you mean lots of everything? Give me some ideas here. Well, okay, I had the um, Taji Tangerine. I was taking that um, several times a day, and I was taking the um, Fuquet Z and all of the other things in the okay. blood sugar pack. Did you change your diet Sweeties. at all? Yes, I did. Okay. I I don't um, have any of the the things in the ten bad food list and all that stuff. Well, I I go based on whatever um, I think is on Doc's website or whatever. Are you on insulin? Yes, I am. Oh, and I'm, have you have you managed to lower your dose of your insulin? Yes. Very Actually, nice. My, my insulin level, my insulin dosage is is very low. I don't take much at all. But I was wondering for my second question if it's possible to get off it fully. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people get off their insulin fully. You are not condemned. You're absolutely not condemned. And just because it's type one and not, and not type two, you know, you could still do a lot of things with your diet and a lot of things with nutrition. And I've heard it. I've heard more than I've heard numerous times people getting off their insulin, type one and type two. So no, don't you know? Keep up the keep up, up the good fight. Do not give up and just fall into the medical model. You sound kind of young too. So insulin, by the way, is a pro-aging hormone. It will accelerate your aging and accelerate your demise. And while it's very important when you take it exogenously, that is like in a drug form, you are playing with fire. And I'm not saying it's not necessary sometimes because it absolutely is necessary sometimes, especially if you're not going to change the way you live, change the way you live your life. But it is not something to t that you just want to take glibly and lightly because it is very, very powerfully pro-aging. It's also a bodybuilding substance, by the way. You know what insulin's main role is to feed cells. 
not just sugar, but to feed cells nutrients. It's a feeding hormone. And oh, by the way, cancer loves sugar. It has way more insulin receptors. Uh, cancer cells have way more insulin receptors than regular cells do. So you got to be, you can't just be taking the insulin and just say, oh, well, I can go about living my life now. Just because you're on insulin doesn't mean you're off the hook with taking care of your nutrition and diet. And if you are on insulin, like if you're on any medical drug, if you're on any prescription drug, if you're on anything that is exogenously manipulating your biochemistry, uh, pharmacologically, I should say, manipulating your biochemistry, your number one health goal, whether it's insulin, or whether it's an ordinary standard type of drug, your number one health goal is to wean yourself off of that. should be to wean yourself off of that, uh, whether it's insulin or anything else. Does that help you there, Dorian? And, and stay yeah. on the sweeties. And stay, how about okay. the niacin? I didn't, hear you, I didn't hear you say anything about the niacin. Oh, the niacin, um, I don't think I take that one, but maybe I should consider it. Yes, absolutely. Niacin is, niacin is part, along with chromium, uh, chromium and niacin are part of something called the glucose tolerance factor. And the glucose tolerance factor uh, helps potentize, helps make insulin stronger. So if you're getting your niacin and getting your sweeties, getting your chromium and getting your vanadium for that matter, your insulin will be stronger. And that means you'll have to take less artificial insulin, less pig insulin. Are you taking the pig insulin? When, you know, when they give you I insulin, they give, they give you I pig insulin. To. So instead of the pig insulin, you are, and it's not that the insulin molecule is different, it's just that you're taking it artificially, you're taking it pharmacologically, you'll be able to wean yourself off of that. Or, or okay. more, you'll be able to start taking less and less of that, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Good luck. Thank you Thank very you. much. All right. And by the way, if you have an autoimmune disease, if you have type 1 diabetes, autoimmunity, you are also more at risk for other autoimmune diseases because when the immune system goes haywire, it can happen anywhere in the body. And it's very rare, actually, that it only happens in one part of the body, even though it's more dramatic. It tends to be more dramatic in one place, in one specific part than it is in other parts. But you're running high risk for everything, for all autoimmune diseases, as well as other health challenges. There's a concept in, in, in um, uh, medicine called comorbidity. And comorbidity is the idea that diseases uh, come together, that things happen together. And if you have one disease, you're way more likely to have others because the body breaks down as a system. The body is a system. This idea of breaking it apart into individual diseases and individual body parts and individual body systems is a fallacy of medicine. And just another reason why the medical model is an utter failure when it comes to treating long-term chronic degenerative diseases. Can you take nutritional supplements to turn your diseases around? Absolutely 100%. You got to know what you're doing. You got to be strategic about it. You got to use a system, but absolutely 100% you can turn around any health challenge using nutrition as well as other lifestyle strategies. It's not just supplementation. It's other lifestyle strategies as well. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Please check out our longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com, and then... Uh, you can also uh, check out our Truth Treatment products, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, and our new Biomimetic Priming Mist at TruthTreatments.com, TruthTreatments.com. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. 